Welcome back to Belly Acres Kitchen. I've got a lot of things going on this evening. It is almost eight o'clock and um, we we got done. We had a lot of running around to do and then Russ and I had some, you know, get our chores done for the evening. But now I'm trying to get the kitchen chores done um, and I can kind of show you guys that. And I've got some stuff that have, need my attention. I've got some bananas that are very, very ripe. So I'm gonna go ahead and make some banana bread tonight. Um, and, um, but first, let's talk about these kitchen chores on the homestead. So I have a whole bunch of eggs that I need to wash. That's what I'm doing right now, washing them and crating them. Um, so let me take you through the process here. So these little uh, trays, they're just like, um, fast food trays, you know, like you think about you get french fries or country basket, you know, Dairy Queeners, if you know what I'm talking about. My sister had had all of these when she used to uh, sell food. And um, she ended up sending all these to me when I had the when Russ and I had the produce stand, she thought that we could uh, showcase our vegetables in them and they did work pretty good. But um, I, I just had these packed away. And I had been seeing online everybody posting these egg organizers that they were getting online where you have baskets and you put, you know, Monday through Sunday. Well, I was using this basket. I love this little basket that I found at a um, thrift store. It's wire. I love it. It's very rustic. It's very farmhouse. And that's what I was using to put the eggs in. The problem with that is they were not getting rotated. So every day that they would yeah, uh, eggs would be brought in. They were just being piled on top. So we were losing out on eggs because they weren't being rotated. And by the time they were being washed and rotated, it was too late for some. So I decided to use these. So here in a minute, I'll take you guys out to the coop and show you where I'm putting these. But um, <clears throat> I put these out in the coop. And then as uh, we check for eggs, we can bring our eggs in and these. Well, then I cleared some um, shelf space because, you know, I have so much shelf space, right? Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> but I did go ahead and clear some for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And then this is my wash bin. So when things get, once I hit a full week, I can either put the eggs in the wash bin or I can just go ahead and wash them. So I'm just washing them. So as you're bringing in eggs... You're just putting these in the appropriate spots and then once I get to washing them and putting them up I can take these back out to the coop <clears throat> and then they're there for you know they're always out there so then that way we can bring uh, eggs in and not be trying to carry a bowl or something back and forth okay guys so you can see we're out here in the coop right up there <laughs> Here's where we keep our egg baskets at. I got the ones we're returning. Just stuff that right down in there like that. Throw one on the floor. Okay, just like that. Got them propped up there. He's not happy that I'm in here. But he'll be alright. But yeah, that's where we keep our egg baskets at. Right here in the, the nesting boxes. Once they're washed, they're crated. And sorry, excuse my crazy, dirty refrigerator. But like last week, I put them in 18 counts. Um, this week, I'm putting them in a uh, dozen uh, and the, the dozen car uh, cartons. And then that way, I know I need to use the 18 count first and then the dozen. And then the next week, I'll do 18 count again. Now that's all if Rusty can't sell eggs. <laughs> so Rusty's been pretty successful. The first week he posted eggs, he sold out in 24 hours. But then what happened? I posted this week and got put in marketplace jail. Yeah, so. For whatever reason, Meta has decided that we cannot sell farm products on marketplace. Right. So you have to be creative how you post. <laughs> yes. So, but he was approved. He appealed it and he was approved to sell them. So we are back in business. Back in business. And if you see a post for breakfast nuggets, 
You know that they come from Robertson's Belly Acres. <laughs> so that's the egg business. So I am going to go ahead and wash these. And then, and then, and then. I'm going to go ahead and make some um, banana bread. I was going to come home and make regular bread because we are almost out of bread and I'm trying to go to the store less. But, um, and my friend Michelle, she's been making bread like crazy. And so now I have the bread bug too. I want to make bread too. <laughs> yeah, bread. But I'm not going to have time tonight to do that. So let me show you guys a hack. It's not really a hack. It's just being lazy. But I have some um, Rhodes dinner rolls. I usually, I try to keep these in the freezer just for, um, just for special occasions, just for whenever. Just for just in case. Just in case. And a lot of times I will set them out in the morning and then we have bread in the evening if I want bread and I haven't made bread. But so I just take these and I set them in there. I'm trying four. I've done three before. And uh, so the bread did not rise the next morning. I got up and it was completely flat. I'm not real sure what happened. It may have been putting the extra rolls in there. It may have been too much. But I will let them rise overnight. And then in the morning when I get up, I'll throw them in the oven. And by the time um, I get around to making breakfast, so I need toast, and making our sandwiches for lunch, it should be done and I can cut them and go ahead and get it done. It's hard to cut warm bread but um we're gonna make it work anyway so um that's just kind of my lazy hack that's what i'm doing for tomorrow because rusty's eating the last of the bread right now because he needs a sandwich <laughs> made short work of that I just got to dry those but let's come over here and look at Rusty's sandwich here well what's going on here sir I'm making the perfect ham sandwich oh, wow. that looks amazing he did have supper you guys I did have supper but we had supper like at four o'clock yeah we're not we're not there yet we're not we're not four o'clock supper people yeah so it, he was kind of scrounging around but Let's see, we've got... I'm on, a, I'm on a sandwich kick right now anyway. That's Carb Smart. Carb Smart bread. You guys, uh, this stuff. Carb Smart what? Um, wheat bread. Wheat bread. Rachel found this. It is whole wheat, six net carbs per slice. Yep. Score. It was, and it was this really is good. good tasting bread. I don't know how much it is regular price. I found it in the reduced price bin. And I'm not scared to go to the reduced price bin. Yeah. But it was like a dollar fifty or two fifty or $1. something. Dollar fifty a loaf. Yeah. So I mean it was a really good score. And no, we don't we don't keep bread long enough for no, it we don't to go keep, bad. <laughs> keep bread long enough to go bad, but I mean, this is good enough. It did two loaves are in less than a week. Yeah. So Yeah. But if you're gonna make the perfect sandwich, you guys, it starts out with all the right ingredients. Let me tell you. I'll show you. You got this crap in your refrigerator, put it back. Don't put that on a good sandwich. <laughs> That's a debate. <laughs> you got to have real mayonnaise. Mayonnaise. Not mayonnaise. Mayonnaise. You got to have you some good old ham or turkey. Sliced American cheese. Real cheese, not, the, not that artificial stuff. Then... Have to have some jalapenos. Pickled jalapenos. We're getting there. And then you top all that off <laughs> with some quality redneck lettuce. So you put lots of mayonnaise on your bread, two slices of ham, a slice of cheese. I put, I think there was nine or ten jalapenos on this one. About the same on this one, but I want a jalapeno in every bite. Top that with redneck <laughs> lettuce. Put the lid on it. There you oh, go. Here's the crunch. crunch. Yep. That's the way it's supposed to sound. <laughs> there we go. And then 
ever so gently pick it up. You gotta pinch the bottom of it shut so it doesn't fall out the bottom. Mmm. And see, jalapenos and every bite. All right, back to the chores. Songs of worries traveling with the storm. But I must try to feel it out alone. Y'all, that is six and a half dozen eggs in one week. And that's because we dropped one. So it was almost seven dozen, honestly. <laughs> I, I dropped one. I had one casualty. But um, almost seven dozen in a week in February. Amazing. It's just great. So I'm going to go ahead and put these in the refrigerator. Wish me luck. I've got to find room. All right, you guys. So that's not a bad, that's not a bad problem to have right there. I just got to find room for everything. But um, yeah, that's going to be good. I can put the mustard right there. Maybe. Look, mustard is in the refrigerator, not in the freezer. Mm -hmm. And look at this. Doesn't that look good? I'm going to be making that tomorrow. Make some chile rellenos. I picked up some poblanos. I'm going to make chile rellenos with poblano peppers instead of Anaheim's because we like it a little on the spicy side. So, um, spicier side. <laughs> so we'll be doing that tomorrow. I'm thinking about making chile rellenos not breaded. I had some unbreaded chile rellenos at, um, at a uh, Mexican restaurant uh, a couple of weeks ago. I went, I met um, Lisa, which is Allie, my oldest daughter's mother-in-law, and her and I had a really good day. We went shopping for Baby Maverick, and we um, were, were trying to get his uh, baby shower together and going, so... Um, yeah, but we went out to eat and I had a chile relleno and it was not breaded and it was so incredibly good. So I'm thinking about making that tomorrow and it's better for you too. So because the bread didn't rise, I ended up making that meat um, in the morning for lunch because we didn't have bread for sandwiches. So I made some fajita burritos for everybody's lunch and they were also super disappointed to not have sandwiches. Ha ha, just kidding. Let's get on to the banana bread. All right, you guys, so today's um, banana nut bread is a very special banana nut bread that we are going to make because it was sent to us from one of our subscribers. She actually sent us, it was right around Christmas, and we we're having a really hard time getting mail. Like for some reason, we were not receiving the mail that... Um, you know, people would say, hey, we've sent something and we were not receiving it. And by the time her package got to us, she had enclosed banana nut bread in the package and it was already bad by the time we got it. So we didn't get to try it, but we just thought that was just so super sweet. But she also included her recipe for banana nut bread. So this is Sheila Tubbs. She is amazing. She comments on a lot of our videos and she said that I could share this um, recipe with you guys and I'm going to make her recipe. So I just hope it comes out, um, you know, as good as, as hers is because uh, it, it, it looks amazing. So um, like I said, I have these bananas. I have about six bananas here and her uh, recipe calls for three. So I'm just going to double my recipe. I have three big bread loaves and I have two of them over there with bread in them rising. So I'm going to use my um, false graph bread, bread loaf. I love this. It's so pretty. But anyway, it goes with the rest of my dishes. So I'm using uh, this bread loaf pan. And then I also have a large, um, uh, I need to wash it. I have a large muffin pan, not muffin tin that I'm also going to use. So I'm going to wash this real quick. And this one's already washed up. And then we're going to start making Sheila's banana nut bread. Now, Sheila's uh, banana nut bread, Sheila, if you are watching this, um, it does call for walnuts. <clears throat> 
I uh, can't eat walnuts. I like, I don't know, it's not really an allergy. They just tear up my mouth really bad. It's kind of like pineapple is the same way if I eat too much of it, but I'm substituting chopped pecans. So, and I'm only gonna put that in half of the mixture. We're gonna double the recipe, but we're going to do half of it without nuts and half of it with nuts. ready now. I've got, um, I just use a uh, spray and then uh, flour to get those pans ready. And I've already got flour all over Paragon Ridge Ranch. If you guys have not checked out Chrissy and Jeremy over there at Paragon Ridge Ranch, please do so because they are amazing people and they are some of our best friends. Um, she is making some killer sourdough. I'm so incredible incredibly jealous. I want to know how to do it. And I don't know how to make sour dough. So I may be having to give Chrissy a ring. <laughs> I mean, a call. I'm not going to give her a ring. She already has one. Jeremy beat me to it. <laughs> the other thing that I need to get done is these, get these bananas mushed. And they were very, very mushy. That's why I needed to get this done tonight and not wait. Because I don't think they would have made it one more day. Uh, let's see. Look at that. They just mushed right up. Beautiful. All right, I'm going to set that aside. I also have my um, butter sitting on the stove because I was not thinking ahead and I did not get butter out to soften. So, so since we're waiting on that, I'm going to go ahead and mix my dry ingredients in this bowl. I am doubling Miss Tubbs' recipe, Miss Sheila's recipe. So, it calls for one and a quarter cups of plain flour. So, I am going to do um, two and a half cups of uh, just all purpose flour. One and two and a half. Two and a half cups of all purpose flour. We buy our flour in bulk and then I just keep it in this. Well, this is my mom's trash can <laughs> that uh, she keeps it in. But um, we have some five gallon buckets that we will also be storing. <laughs> okay, so flour then we need it calls for one teaspoon of baking soda and so since we are doubling this recipe we are going to do two teaspoons of baking soda two teaspoons and then we are doing one whole teaspoon of salt again we're doubling And that's my dry, oh, my dry ingredients that I want, that I'm going to add. Okay, I'm gonna leave that aside. And then it does call for two eggs, so it's gonna be four eggs. Um, I am using the eggs that I just washed because these are still room temperature. Anytime I'm baking, I try to use room temperature eggs. So again, we are doubling. So I'm gonna go ahead and beat four eggs and then we'll have those ready to rock and roll when we get to that point. All these eggshells are going into my compost. Well, I say that. It's my compost. Uh, I have a little uh, can in here to collect all my compost and then I take it out. Well, um, Layla has been finding the compost. So if I'm lucky, I will still have some compost. We're just going to beat those. And we are going to set those aside as well. I'm going to leave that in there because I may need to 
mix them all up again here in just a little bit. All right, so let's move on to the instruction side of the um, recipe. So it says, whip butter and sugar together. And then we're gonna add liquids, mix, then add dry ingredients, mix, and pour in the pan. Bake at 350 for 30 minutes or, done, or until done, and then she says enjoy. So she is saying a half a cup of sugar, but since we are doubling, let's grab a whole cup of sugar. This looks like a one-to-one -one ratio for sugar and butter. Did I get quite a... Okay, so one cup of sugar. And then she says one stick of butter, but we are doubling. Uh-oh, my butter's melting. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. I left that on top of my stove too long. It was... Uh, I have the oven preheating at 350, oh, 350, and so I had it slid too far back. Okay, lock that. And then we're just gonna cream those together. Shout out to my mama who gave me this big bowl here for my um, KitchenAid. She had given me, uh, I had I had two of these. One of my friends, her name is Chrissy, another Chrissy. I have a lot of friends that are named Chrissy, I noticed. But another one of my friends, Chrissy, had given me two of these bowls for my KitchenAid. And I gave one away to my sister-in-law. And I kept one, and then I dropped mine and broke it. <laughs> so I didn't have a big one like this. And then my mom said, you know what, I've got a bowl that I think will fit your KitchenAid. And I was like, yay! So I got a, I got another one, I'm glad. I like these big bowls, uh, the big glass bowls. Together, and then I go in with my spatula and I scrape the sides. But that's already looking so creamy and beautiful. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start adding the uh, liquid ingredients. So it looks like a one full teaspoon of vanilla. You guys, look here. We got some of that uh, Lazy Days Ahead. Jess and Lisa use sticker vanilla. Only the best here, right? Let's see. One full teaspoon of that. And then again, we are we are doubling. So original recipe calls for half a teaspoon. And then two large eggs that are beaten. Oh. I don't need that in there. Beaten. So let's go ahead and add that in. That mixed up really well. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn this off and scrape the sides so we can get all that butter and sugar to integrate into the liquid here. Scrape the bottom, scrape the sides. Let's get it all mixed in. All right. So here we go. Here we go, loop de loop. It is mixed really well. I like it, I like it. So now the bananas. Go ahead and dump the bananas in it. This says the liquids. So I think I'm gonna add the bananas in with the liquids. Okay. 
beautiful. We're going to go ahead and slowly dump in this dry ingredients. Two and a half. Yeah, I did two and a half. Whoa. You'd be nice. Alright, I am going to go ahead and open this and scrape the sides. I don't want to over mix it. Because I don't want it to have huge holes or anything. You know, like if you get too much air and a cake batter. I'm going to go ahead and scrape the bottom of this pan and make sure that we are okay. I hate when I'm pouring a cake batter or something and then you find the dry on the bottom. So let's make sure. That is beautiful. Look at that. Ooh, and it smells so good, you guys. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. It will make me hungry again. Okay. We're going to have Rusty in here making two more sandwiches. All right, so let's go with another bowl. Let me wash one that we've already used. I'm not going to dirty another bowl. You ever need a spatula for your spatula? Just trying to get it half and half here. Okay. Ooh, that's pretty close. So. I could weigh these and get it really precise, but you know what? I'm not that concerned about it. We're just going to eyeball it. And I know it seems silly dumping it into two pans just to dump it, or bowls, just to dump it into two pans, but I wanted to get it as close to half as I could. So, here we go. Pour this one into a loaf pan and that is beautiful beautiful now this loaf pan is a little bit deeper than most of your loaf pans so i may be adding a little bit more to it because i just want a good loaf of bread here okay so we're going to leave that alone. <clears throat> now, now for the muffins, we're going to add what's left of these chopped pecans, okay? So I'm going to keep a few to just sprinkle on top. So then that way we know, hey, the muffins have pecans. So if you don't want pecans, don't eat these, right? So, woo, look at that. Beautiful. All right, we're going to use this little, this little, this big ice cream scoop here. And we're going to just dump it right in. Two. Three. Four.
five. There's the spatula for my spatula, right? The spatula. Six. Darn it. They almost had it. I'm going to overfill these. We're going to have a little bit. We're going to have some big muffin tops, okay? I mean, kind of runs in the family here. There we go. We're going to squeeze them in, Miss Sheila. We're going to squeeze them in. All right. Anytime I make muffins or a little bit of bread, I do like to put a little bit of sugar on top. I like that crunchiness on the top. So I'm going to sprinkle the tops of them with a little bit of sugar. And you can do use uh, brown sugar as well if you'd rather, but I don't want to alter the flavor of Miss Sheila's bread because I'm so excited to try it. Okay, so then I'm going to sprinkle these on top. So then that way we look at it and go, oh yeah, those have pecans. All right, so these just a little there. All right, so now Miss Sheila says to bake them for 30 minutes or until they're done. So normally bread is about 40, 45 minutes, but we will see. We're going to check these in 30 minutes, just like Miss Sheila said, and then we'll go from there. All right, so those are in the oven. I am going to go ahead and clean up my mess um, because Desi already had the kitchen all clean. Um, she had done the dishes tonight before she went to bed. So I am going to clean up my mess and, uh, and then we'll check back in 30 minutes and see how they're doing. All right, so my timer is going off. Whoop. But I'm looking with the light and I'm really scared to open this because that bread, excuse the messy door, but that bread looks like it really wants to puff up some more. But look, those muffins look like they're done. So I'm kind of in a catch 22. I may, I just don't want that bread to drop. Oop, it's gonna drop. Okay, I'm gonna pull those. Up. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that, um, those muffins. I know the bread's not done. And check it really quick. Oh yeah. Um, those muffins may need another, maybe another five minutes. I am also. Awesome. I'm homemade. I mean, some popcorn, old fashioned style, <clears throat> because Rusty's got, <clears throat> Rusty's got Hulu fired up over there. I don't want it to pop. Oh. I may have put too much in there. I just don't want it to burn. I'm gonna turn it off. It has stopped popping for the most part. Woo! I say that one. Y'all, popcorn made like this just hits different. It's just, it's just a whole different ball game. So I put butter in it when I popped it and a little bit of salt. I may need a little more salt. Definitely has that kettle, kettle corn taste.
Desi's already in bed. She's gonna miss out. <laughs> oh, yes. Mmm. It's like mama used to make. Isn't it crazy? Mm -hmm. Tastes like childhood. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, so sometimes the smallest inconveniences brings you back to childhood. So we haven't had a um, microwave for about almost going on a month, isn't it? About a month. About a month now. And I really don't miss it. It's so weird. I just, I have to plan ahead. I have to make sure I have stuff, you know, always defrosting in my um, refrigerator. But other than that, I mean, I just really don't miss it. Um, eating leftovers is a little bit of a hassle because you have to warm it up on the stove, but really big deal. I mean, for the most part, Rusty takes leftovers to work and they have a microwave there. And um, if Desi takes leftovers to school, she has a microwave. And if I were to take leftovers to school, I have a microwave if I'm working. So we just haven't really missed it. And that popcorn, that's worth not having a microwave. <laughs> All right, so these muffins are done. And oh my goodness, they look amazing. Uh, I'm going to let them, maybe let them set. I was going to see if they would let go fairly easy. Oh, look at that. You guys. Oh, it's so heavy. Goodness. Look at that. That is beautiful. That is a beautiful mu muffin. Yes. Look at that. Y'all. And that cooked, that baked in like 30, probably about 33 minutes. That is gorgeous. Uh, Miss Sheila, thank you so much for sharing your recipe. I can't wait to taste it. Mm -hmm. But I'm also waiting on... That one is about done. It's beautiful. We're going to give it another five minutes. All right, so Rusty and I, we can't wait. We're going to try this. I'm going to cut this in half. Let's look at the inside here. Oh my goodness. Look at that. That is beautiful. Now, Rusty and I both like to eat this with butter. So I am going to put butter just right there on top to slather it. And it's hot, so I'll probably. It's 40 and, 40 and 1. It's so at 1. <laughs> So we got to clear our palates here. Yeah. It is very late to be eating this. And it's hot. It's hot. You may need a fork to. So Miss Sheila Tubbs, this is Miss Sheila's um, recipe. So here we go. Do you really taste it? No, I ate a nut. Here we go. Mmm. Baby. That's awesome. Thank you, Miss Sheila. This is probably the easiest bread recipe I've made. And it, you know, for the muffins, it didn't take quite as long to cook. Well, the loaf is going to take a little bit longer, but... The muffins baked, what, 35 minutes? Yeah. And this just has baking soda in it, not baking powder and baking soda. <clears throat> Which is really odd to me. Mm -hmm. Very simple ingredients. Very good. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. It is not oversweet. Mm -mm. But it's not bland either. No, it's got very good flavor. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. And like we've talked about on here before, I'm not a banana person. Mm -hmm. But I like banana, but not bread, especially this. This is really good. It doesn't have a real overbearing banana flavor to it. It's just a nice mellow. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's a win. I love it. 
Thank you so much, Sheila, for sending this. I wish we could have tasted your bread when it came in, but I'm so glad you sent the recipe so that yes. we could make it and we could taste it anyway. And thank you so much. Like, that is so awesome. If you want me to try one of your recipes on, um, on a video, send me your recipe. We'll try it out. Um, I've got a couple of other recipes. Uh, Miss Sheila did also send me a bread pudding recipe. I'm going to wait for mom to get back for that because I'm not real big on bread pudding and Rusty is. And oh, I might make it for Rusty's parents too. They would like bread it. Pudding. Bread, bread pudding. Bread pudding. Bread <laughs> pudding. So, um, and then I also have another recipe from Adam at Like a Bully that I want to try. So, but anyway, yeah, if you want me to try some of your recipes on a video, just send it in and we will give it a try. Mm -hmm. We'll give you an honest review. Miss Sheila? That's so good. That's the bomb. Sounds like the bread loaf is done. So I'm going to go grab that. I hope you guys like our videos. If you do, hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Yep, share with your friends. Leave us some comments, you guys. Let us know what you think of Miss Sheila's recipe. Mm -hmm. But most of all, don't forget to smash that bell and get notified of the next new video when it comes out. Yep, until next time, you guys. God bless. See ya. I see it in your eyes. Yeah, I can read the signs You need to get away It's time we make a change Oh, you know you'll always have me Baby, I will always stay with you So put your trust in me We'll work it out, you'll see Drive someplace far